Welcome, and thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. We want you to fully engage with us, so feel free to gather your family, invite a friend, or if you're alone, we trust that you'll have a wonderful worship experience with us today. Our worship service will begin in just a few minutes. Father, thank you so much for giving us another day of life, Father, the air that we breathe, Father, the sun that shines on our faces. Father, we thank you for continuing to do great things, the seen and unseen in our lives, Father. We ask that you be with us now, Father, as we lift up worship unto you because you deserve every single word, every single note. As we bow our knees, lift our hands. We know that you are here sitting in your throne. At the foot of the cross, we lay our burdens down. We believe in you, Father. We know that you are more than able. 
We love you. Have your way today, Father. In Jesus' name.
we believe in you, Father.
Lord, we thank you so much for the finished work of Jesus. Thank you for uh, husband and wives. Um, God, uh, you have ordained one woman, uh, one man uh, for one lifetime. And even though we may fail in it in certain ways, and uh, you redeem um, time after time as we humble ourselves before you. So today we humble ourselves before you under the mighty hand of God. And I pray that you will exalt marriages, Lord, uh, in, a, in due season, uh, in ways that we can uh, celebrate and look back upon uh, those moments that you have intervened and rescued and uh, redeemed hearts and souls and transforms, transformed men and women uh, into the image of your son, Jesus. So Lord, come, do what you do best in me and Lisa today in Jesus' name. Amen. All right, so um, we are, again, we sidetracked our sermon series, which we've entitled Encourage uh, One Another, and we felt that it was essential to then say, how do we then encourage him, meaning the husband, and how do we encourage her, who is the wife? So we've kind of narrowed it down to our top three, okay? Top three uh, ways to encourage your husband, top three three ways to encourage your wife, okay? So there's three. Uh, some are a little more uh, specific to one or the other, but our hope is that even though they're not completely exhaustive, that we will be able to identify uh, some good things from this. Real quickly, we were talking about encouraging each other. The Word of God has everything you need for life and living to encourage your husband or encourage your wife. So that's the first place you want to start. We're just going to try to break it down. But where you want to start first is the word of God. He tells yeah. you how your relationship with God should look like and your relationship with each other should look like. The, the uh, husband and wife is the extra bonus, but that person next to you that you're married to is still your brother and sister in Christ. And I think sometimes in marriage we forget that. Yeah, well, you start out being brothers and sisters in Christ and you end that way. Mm -hmm. Because the scripture says there are no marriages given in heaven, you know. So you start out, brothers and sisters in Christ, you end that way. So I believe the privilege of enjoying one and each other on this earth is essential to do it in a way that is respectful. So as Lisa alluded to, these top three um, will help, we hope, uh, in, unlock what we call respect that he needs to help encourage him. Because... When you look at uh, the man, one of the main things he needs to feel is respected, that you are respecting me as a man, all right? But then one of the main things that a woman desires is to be loved, and that also encourages her. Now, here's the cool thing, though. When you respect a man, then he also feels loved. When you love a woman, her, your wife the right way, as Christ loved the church, then she feels what? Respect it. So respect comes both ways. Love should go both ways. But at the end of the day, uh, there is something that a man needs first. And is that, hey, respect me. Respect what I say. Respect what I feel. Respect how I think. Respect who I am as a man. And a woman longs to be loved uh, by her man. She longs to be loved and to somehow figure that out <laughs> when, when sometimes it gets really complicated or how she needs to be loved. Um, and that also tells her that you respect me because you're learning to love me and discover me. So again, from this, the hope is when we do dive into these three things that they will begin to unlock, unlock, unlock what we all desire from each other. Make sense? So if you can look first at Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. Genesis chapter 2, verses 18 through 25. Okay, 18. Then the Lord said, it is not good for the man to be alone. I will make him a helper suitable for him. And out of the ground, the Lord formed every animal of the field and every bird of the sky and brought them to the man to see what he would call them. And whatever the man called a living creature, that was its name. The man gave names to all the livestock to, and to the birds of the sky and to every animal of the field. But for Adam, there was not found a, suit, a helper suitable for him. So the Lord God caused a deep sleep to fall upon the man and he slept. Then he took one of his ribs and closed up the flesh at that place. All right. Continuing with verse 22, it says, And the Lord God fashioned into a woman the rib which he had taken from the man and brought 
her to the man. Then the man said, at last, this is bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh, and she shall be called woman because she was taken out of man. And then a final uh, two verses we have, it says, for this reason, a man shall leave his father and his mother and be joined to his wife, and they should uh, become one flesh. And the man and his wife were both naked, but they were not ashamed. So how do we encourage him? How do we encourage her? How do we encourage your husband? How do you encourage your wife? Here's the first. Lisa will share the first part. Stop being his mother, his mother or her father. All right. Let that kind of settle a bit. Stop being his mama and stop being his daddy. I mean, her, yeah, you know what I mean. Yeah, I better clarify that. Her daddy, her daddy. You follow what I'm saying? Stop, because that is the sinful tendency. The sinful tendency is let me mother him. The sinful tendency is I will father you. You may not say it, but every word and every action communicates that. So that being said, okay. from verse 18. What he needs is a suitable helper. The definition of suitable helper is to aid or assist, whether immaterial or material. Adam's complementary partner. Notice the word it says to aid or assist. You were created to come alongside and help, not to take over. Man, just because you have a helper, it does not mean you just sit down and give orders. You are, you, we're both working this marriage together. It's not at the time to be, I'm the boss, and check out. And the hard truth is, man, if you don't do your job, we as women are going to take over and we're going to do it. And it's a matter of survival. But that's not God's order. Uh, it's an it's a inappropriate takeover. But it's going to happen. If you don't get it done, she don't get it done. And that's just a matter of survival. You know, I mean, truth be told, it's like, okay, you're not going to call that bill collector? Well, I'm going to call him. Mm -hmm. You know, if you, don't call, if you don't talk to him, I'm going to talk to him. If you don't talk to her, I'm going to talk to her. If you, don't get, if you don't take care of business, I'll take care of it. It's inappropriate, but it will always happen. Makes sense? So then you find in verses 22 and 23 is that what she needs is a substantive part of you guys. In other words... She is an essential part of you. She's just not this piece hanging out with you, okay? In other words, you see a few key words in verse 22 and 23 is that uh, she was fashioned. In other words, she was built from Adam, not created separately. She was built from Adam, and I think that's so wise with God, is that she is built with Adam. Adam, from Adam, not separate, which sometimes one begins to try to live and think and operate, right? But then you have woman, which is uh, a Greek, uh, excuse me, Hebrew word, Isha, which is the female version of man, or she's the female version of you. Again, you see so many nuances in these verses is that, no, she's literally a part of you. And that's why uh, Adam then said these words, this is now bone of my bone, flesh of my flesh. In other words, this is it's meaning this. This is now essence of my essence. This is now substance of my substance. This is now self of myself. That's literally what Adam is saying. And that's why when you have marital problems, it hurts so bad. Or when a marriage comes to an end. It hurts so, so bad. bad. This is not, good marriage or bad marriage, if it comes to an end, it's, there's something supernatural that, that yeah. God does in marriage. Yeah. And like I said, this is now bone of my bones. It's like your bone is broken. Yeah. Yeah. So, so therefore, guys, is there's the, if she's essential, uh, Ephesians even talks about, you know, if you care for your own body, you will also care for her. You, you don't just neglect your own body. Right. You know, so our challenge is to become uh, men and women who understand that we're not called to be each other's mothers or daddies. Makes sense. But we're going to go a little further in verse 24. I said what he needs is someone to connect with. Join. The definition of join is to cling, to cleave, to stay with, to pursue closely. Synonym. <laughs> the synonym. <laughs> synonym yep. is to connect. Yeah. Ladies, you may need to be healed by God to, be feel, to uh, feel safe enough to be vulnerable with your husband. 
Because sometimes we come from backgrounds that might not have been the healthiest of backgrounds, and we take that into our relationships with our, our spouses. Yeah. If you've come, and sometimes if you've come from a, a family where a mother was dominant, and the thing is you don't let no man do, 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 do you don't let man, do, 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 do. you come in as much as you don't, might not want to have those habits, but because you've lived with somebody 18, 19 years, you're gonna pick up some of those habits. Mm -hmm. And sometimes we bring those into our marriages, not giving yeah. your, your husband a chance to prove himself, because yeah. we've got up walls. We come yeah. in with walls, because we've been hurt, and we're gonna yeah. protect ourselves. Yeah. So yeah. We, sometimes we have to go to God and say, okay, God, what is it in me that is keeping me yeah. from being vulnerable mm -hmm. to my husband? Yeah. And it might be something, you know, sometimes the truth is hard to deal with, yeah. Yeah. but they don't, it brings healing. Sometimes you got yeah. to dig to mm -hmm. get to the root, to get the root out, to yeah. bring the healing that you need. Everybody comes into a marriage unpacking their Samsonite luggage, we call it, with your dirty laundry in it. Dirty laundry could be that you, had, you didn't have a father, right? You didn't have any man around you. Then you bring it in, in the marriage, and then you, you're like, no. Nah, I could do this thing on my own. Myself. Or here's, here's the weird thing. You could have had an awesome dad, but then you hold your husband accountable to be just like your dad. Impossible. He will never be your daddy. Ne he will never measure up. So quit trying to make him measure up. Period. So the challenge is, from that, then now you're telling me, I want to... Cling to me, open up to me, be vulnerable to me, husband. It's like, no, you're making it hard for me in some cases. Now, guys, here's our challenge, verse 25. What you need is a sincere connection. That takes vulnerability. In other words, many times we too need to be healed so that we can sincerely connect with our spouse, not just go to work, not just come home. And we think, oh, that's a connection because I'm not out with the boys. Well, you know, I connect because I do laundry. Oh, I connect because I'm with the kids. I connect because I'm a good dad. I connect because I ain't out there running around cheating. I'm not, I'm not like that person that you were with before. And we define that as I'm connecting with you. I'm loyal to you. Yeah, loyalty is a part of it, but she also needs a part of you emotionally, in which we're not very good at that. So we have to be healed enough by God, that we say, okay, shucks, here I am. Scars and all. Because my confidence is in him, not in my relationship or my status and or what I do and don't do in the home. In other words, a man must be strong, but also emotionally engaging and present. Man up, be strong, absolutely. Absolutely. Listen, there's going to be things that, absolutely, there's going to be things that, yeah, you may not cry in or about, that she's just like, oh, weeping and breaking down. And, and if you're like, oh, I can't believe it too. Oh, shucks. Oh, oh, oh. You know, in other words, like early in our marriage, Lisa's like, well, why aren't you crying? I'm like, somebody's. Why aren't you upset? Yeah, why aren't you upset? So somebody's got to keep a level head here. Well, why didn't that you? I said, because. It upsets me, but somebody's got to be composed here. Make sense? I mean, I've seen the strongest woman, and she's one of them, break down. Because that's the way they're wired. That's the way they fully emotionally engage. And we shouldn't say something's wrong with you. Stop crying. Why are you crying? We shouldn't be doing that. But nor should she be saying, well, why aren't you crying? Why aren't you crying? Why aren't you crying? Because chances are, many guys, this is what I found out about myself, I weep a lot on the inside. Some of you guys know what I'm talking about. But I had to learn vulnerability that I must also cry on the outside. Make sense? Even though I may weep on the inside, even though I'm riding down the road weeping by myself, even though I'm in the shower covering up with water and weeping and all those different places guys weep, but there are times you do need to cry in front of your wife. There are times you do need to cry in front of your children because they connect with that and say, oh, he's feeling it. He sees it. He's, he gets it. Make sense? So there's times that our emotions shouldn't always be when we're flipping out and raising our voice. 
inappropriate. I believe a man only have a few trump cards that, to be able to raise your voice in the midst of the context of your family. There are times a man needs to elevate it <coughs> under control, but you only have a few op opportunities for that. Few opportunities for that. Mama, oh, she can just say whatever she wants, however she wants, whenever she wants. And everybody's like, oh, mama's just having a bad day. And that's the truth. Is it something wrong with that? No. But it is what it is. And you just got to learn how to roll with it and, and deal with it in a healthy, constructive way. All right? Uh, the next is this. So we, we talked about stop being mama and daddy to each other, right? But then here's the second one. Stop to stop being so critical of him or her. What he, she needs is to be healed by your words. Proverbs 12, 18 says, there is one who speaks rashly like the thrusts of a sword, but the tongue of the wise brings healing. Brings healing means to bring a cure, bring health benefit, profit, a soundness of mind. Our words have power. Power to create, as in Genesis. And the opposite, they have power to tear down. And we can't, words don't die. Yeah. How many of you remember something negative said to you when you were little bitty, but you still remember to this day? Yeah. Words don't die. Yeah. Yeah. yeah, even the smallest criticism mm -hmm. can bring big damage. Yes. Just, just cri critical, 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 critical. It's like, dang, am I doing something right? You ever been there? I, I, I'm doing something right, aren't I? Why you keep nagging me and nagging me and nagging me about, you know, picking up the socks, but I'm doing all this 99. Now, again, I'm not saying picking up the socks ain't bad. I mean, ain't Supposed what you should do. But let's, you know, pet the dog. I do tricks. You follow me? You know, tell me, hey, you do, you're so Everybody. good at this. You're doing great with this. Then, you know what that does? It gives me the courage to pick up the socks. Mm -hmm. Or the Spirit of God will convict me. But many times we don't give the Spirit of God space enough to bring conviction. We feel that we're the oracle of God to bring conviction. Just saying. Well, I got to tell you because the Spirit of God is taking too long. <laughs> right? We all do it. It's like, oh, he's taking too long. Now, I got to just tell you what you need to hear. You know, the Spirit of God is showing me. <laughs> You know, Lord, I was reading the Bible, and, and, and the scriptures show what you need to fix about you. <laughs> I'm sorry. Go ahead. I'm all derailed. <laughs> it's, it's said that it takes from three to seven positive words to erase or overcome one negative word. It, it is also said we, we hear 50% of negative words per day. We're out in the workplace, and, and like... Most women are in the workforce. We're out in the workplace. We get beaten up all day. Why do we got to come home mm -hmm. and get beat down and belittled as well? Yeah. And that, that, that shouldn't yeah. be. So your challenge is you got to learn what words will hurt and heal your spouse. Now, is the tricky part of that. You know what hurts them, and then you use the words to hurt to get what you want or to bring them down, right? Let me bring you down to my level or let me make you feel what I'm feeling so I'm going to say hurt words towards you, right, to minimize you, to uh, keep you under control as well because of insecurities and X, Y, Z that comes along with being hurt yourself. So it's super important to be, you know, to be a person who understands that you know, be, be aware, be attentive that, okay, if your spouse says, well, you know, what you just said hurts me, listen. don't just blow it off. Yeah, listen. Mm -hmm. And don't you keep taking hurtful words and not say something. Mm -hmm. And say, you know, every time you say that, that hurts me. And here's the deep thing about marriage. You can, you can have one of those fun-loving marriages, right, meaning that you just course jesting over and over again. But trust me, where there's really many words, sin's not far off. You're going to say something to hurt someone, hurt, hurt your spouse. One day, you're just going to flippantly say something, and you're going to jab them and hurt them, and you're going to now have to make up for it later on. 
So the challenge is to be able to discern what's hurting, what's healing. And if it's not in you to say healing words, you better find, better find them. And I, Cedric has here, we need, to, we need to study each other. I have a sensitive spot. And I, don't, I think my husband just realized it recently that after he, 36 years, he's at home. I mean, he, he goes out to work. I'm at home. Um, or what am I now? I'm not mom. I'm a, I'm a homemaker. So that the house is my job. You still mom. Trust me. <laughs> the house is my job. I want to make sure the house is neat. When he comes home, he has something to eat. But when he walks through the door and that's the dinner's ready, he said, what is it? <laughs> this is not Morrison's cafeteria. <laughs> And it really is a stickler. And I just think, just recently, he got, because it was instant turnoff. And it's like, I ain't, I ain't got to cook tomorrow. <laughs> Everybody up in here grown. They, they oatmeal. You need some oatmeal. Forgive me. Make a turd you ate. So. so. <laughs> but that, it, it was, it, it hurt. It hurt deep. And I mean, it, as simple as that was, yeah. it cut deep. So, you're right, you're right, you're right. And I ask for forgiveness, but here, and this is, this is my reasoning behind it, right? Just tell you how much we can disconnect is that because I'm always conscious of what I eat and like throughout the day, like if I eat heavy, I come home, I may want to eat something light, you know? So I would a lot of times, like, hey, so, what, what, so what do you cook? What did you cook? You know, what is it? You know, because... I'm trying to pace myself with calories, but I realize I can't try to pace myself with calories to ultimately bring hurt. You follow me? So that's, it sounds minor, but it's important to be aware that, oh, shucks, I didn't realize just saying what is it offends you. But, but then you, but you have to peel back and readjust and, and, and ask for forgiveness and get fed. <laughs> With whatever. <laughs> so again, stop being so critical of him. Look, look at what, uh, uh, well, here's a couple other points we want to make. Uh, what she needs is, is, so not, don't hurt me with your words, but heal me with your words. Give me words of appreciation, affirmation. Ephesians chapter four, five, verse four says, and there must be no filthy or foolish talk of vulgar joking which are not fitting, but rather giving of thanks. First uh, Thessalonians chapter five, verse 11 says it this way. Therefore, encourage one another and build one another up. Now, the word thanks in both of these words is from where one gets the word Eucharist. Now, it's, it means thankfulness, grateful speech or discourse. Same word used again for Eucharist, which used in modern language for holy communion which embodies, listen to it, it embodies the highest act of thanksgiving for the greatest gift given by God, salvation through the finished work of Jesus Christ. In other words, this is the importance of being thankful and speaking words of thanks, right? Thank you so much for cooking. <laughs> you know, thank you. Listen, you know, thank you so much for being such a great wife. You know, you're just a great wife. You, thank you so much for being a great husband. Thank you for being a great provider for our home. Thank you so much for being a great mom. Mm -hmm. I mean, who wouldn't like, okay, well, let me go back out there and do it again for you yeah. if you hear more of that versus what you're not doing. And I think sometimes we, what is it? We take for granted our spouses. Yeah. But we need to take the time to stop and thank them. Thank, the, yeah. thank you goes a long yeah. way. And, and I'm sorry, go ahead. I'm sorry. So this is, this, is, this is one of the biggest challenges, is that my criticalness or our criticalness towards our spouse comes from a jaded lens. In other words, you're not doing this because I need you to do this. Nine times out of ten is not even, not even, not even what God wants. It's all you, you know, you, you, didn't, you, didn't, you, you didn't do this for me. Why are you so needy for your spouse to do that, whatever that is, fill in the blank? 
Here's, here's the deep thing. Even though we start off this journey by saying a man needs to be respected, well, why do you really need to be so respected so badly? Aren't you not content in your manhood in Jesus? Well, why do you need your spouse to love you, ladies? You know, husband, love you so badly. Well, you don't love me. You're not doing this. You don't do this. Man. You... Why? It's because you're deficient in Christ's love. Sometimes we, gotta, we have to go back and ask those questions. Yep. You know, why, why does, when this happens, yeah. does this tick me off so badly? Yep. yep. You know, and I can't move. Mm-hmm. Forward. That's when you come back and you ask the Lord to show you what's going on in the yeah. in the depths of your heart that you might not even know about. Because you know sometimes we stuff stuff so deep because we don't want to mm-hmm. deal with it. But the pain is so real, yeah. we stuff it so we don't feel it no more. But it's there, and it's mm-hmm. go, it's going to seek out some kind of way. I don't care how hard you try to stuff it down, yeah. it's going to ooze out. Yeah. So like you've all, you, some of you've heard Lisa, uh, Lisa and I share about our journey. In other words, Lisa, as you probably even know right now, she's very witty. She's very witty with her words. I call them Lisa-isms. It's like, where did you get that from? Where did you hear that? Well, you haven't heard that? I'm like, no, I've never heard that at all. <laughs> you know, and so she, she came into our marriage very jokey, 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 lighthearted. I'm more like stoic. stoic. I'm like, I don't, I don't laugh at everything. Still today, I don't laugh at everything. You know, I don't talk too much, believe it or not, but I'm up here. If you talk about Jesus, I'll talk your head off. But outside that, I don't talk too much. I can be in quietness and stillness. So Lisa would joke with me a lot, and I was easily offended. Like, well, why did you say it that way? Well, why did you say it? Well, this is, this is. And it caused a rift in our marriage. It was like, you ain't got no she's like humor. yeah, she's like, why you have <laughs> I'm like, well, whoa, whoa. I was so edgy, like, uh, uh, uh. why are you? Everybody ain't after you, mister. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. Now, now here's the funny, th- yeah, that's true. Yeah, because, so, now, now I'm feeling the bike because here's, here's the wonderful thing about it was, her sense of humor was one of the attractiveness to me. I mean, I, w- I would just look at her and say, you're so funny. And I would, she's like, oh, what's wrong with that? I said, no, you just make me laugh. But then once she became mine... I became critical, and we always do that. You mind now, so you got to do this, you do this, just change this, change this, change this, change this, change this, change this, and one day, guys, I was praying, talking about Lisa, like, oh, God, you need to change her, you need to do, you know, she, she, he said, so why are you so sensitive? Just, God just called me out, so why are you so sensitive? <laughs> I'm like, oh, and I, so what we've learned in marriage and personally is ask yourself the question, why? And I began to realize that because I was the baby of eight and was always talked about, teased, X, Y, Z, I began to be highly sensitive with words. I'm still constructively highly sensitive to words because I've been healed grown a sense of humor, <laughs> and I realized where it came from, and then I had to literally back up in time and ask God to heal me from that, that childhood pain of being the baby of the family, wasn't affirmed, and oh, you're always, you know, talking down to me, you know, put me in my place, X, Y, Z, and I'm like, no, you ain't talking to me that way. I'm a grown man now. Anybody feel that? Like, no, you ain't talking to me that way. And same thing happens when a boy is raised by, raised by a single mother. Chances are she's like, I got to somehow keep this guy in control. And normally it's through her words. Mm-hmm. Boy, shut up. You better, you better do what I tell you to do. And then now, now I'm with you. And now you too trying to talk to me in that way? Nah, ain't going to happen. Ain't going to happen. So a man would do two things. He either will buck up and be like, don't you talk to me that way. Or he'll die on the inside. He'll just decay on the inside and he'll just take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it, take it. And you don't even know you're losing him. And then now when you said all that to him, then, oh, baby, now can you love me? Or can you? It's like, hold up. All that you just said to me and now you want me to just suck it up? And just like be all romantically acquainted with you, ain't gonna happen. And it's first wave, 
both ways. And it's both ways. It's, it's, yeah. It's definitely so that's the man's perspective. But mm -hmm. go ahead. No, I'm just making sure that we knew it, it, it's both ways. <laughs> Because you can't put me down or yes, absolutely. say harsh things yeah. and then and expect me to want to rub up against you. No. Yeah. No. <laughs> no. I mean, no. <laughs> <laughs> Again, we would, what we forget is this, is that we would dare not speak to a sister yes, in Christ like the way we sometimes speak to our wives. Mm -hmm. Some may try, but it will get too far. <laughs> you know, you, you, there's times that she speaks to her husband, uh, speaks to her boss, her pastor, and respects them more than she does her own husband. And even more encouraging to, to, to them yep. outside of their, their spouses, which should, which should not be. One of the most uncomfortable things I would ever experience as a pastor is that a woman would stand there and affirm me more than she does her husband. It's like, nah, you should probably use some of those words towards him. Because chances are, most, believe it or not, most guys are good guys. Do we have stuff to work on? Do we need to grow up in areas? Absolutely. But if you continue to speak death to them, they're going to become the very thing that you don't want them to be. So you have to get on your knees and ask the power of the Holy Spirit to come upon you and start speaking words of affirmation and words of appreciation and like, sweetheart, you're the best trash taker outer in the whole wide world. Find there's something. Some, there's something. There's, there's something, something that, he, that he is doing right. Or she is he, doing exactly right. right. He or she, or she is doing, is right. doing right. That they yeah. need to be encouraged to yeah. repeat that wonderful whatever it is. And so to end, to end this is this, is that if you can't find something good in your spouse, and if you can't find something good in spouse number two, Number three. That's the common denominator. Just maybe you. Remove the plank from your own eye so you can clearly see the speck in your spouse's eye. We've still got some time. So, <clears throat> point number three. Stop assuming your thoughts or feelings are known by him or her. What he or she needs is for you to respect his, his own or her own thoughts and feelings. 1 Corinthians 2.11. So, I can't read your mind, you mean? No. And yeah, I thought you could. <laughs> you were supposed to. Gotta, before you go further, I got to tell you this story. So, um, again, one of the tensions many times is, well, you should know what I'm thinking, right? So one time Lisa said to me, I'm like, baby, can you just tell me what tell me what you want me to do? Just tell me so you're by. And she says, What'd you say? Well, the Lord tells tell you about everybody, everybody else. else. Why can't he tell, tell you about me? me? <laughs> 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 I'm like, oh dang. You hit me below the belt for sure, for sure. <laughs> but she was right to some degree. Right? In other, you know, we've learned to kind of be be balanced in that. But yeah, I took that to like as a challenge. I said, you know what? I haven't been seeking the Lord about my wife well enough. And yes, you can reveal the hearts of others as we seek you. Why can't you also do that for my wife? So there was a bit of challenge to that, but then we're going to go on the other side and, and talk a little further about this. So I'm sorry, 1 Corinthians. 1 Corinthians 2.11. For who among men knows the thoughts of a person except the spirit of the person that is in him? So also the, so also the thoughts of God no one knows except the spirit of God. Who, am, who among men knows the thoughts of a man? Who among men's households knows the thoughts of a man? So, so you see... That sentence in that verse, it says, who among men knows the thoughts of a man? What it's saying is the word knows means household. So think about this now. Who among men's household knows the thoughts of a man? In other words, you only know what's going, behind, going on behind closed door in your household because you, what, you are there. 
No one knows what your thoughts are because they're your thoughts. They're in your household. You follow me? They're in your head. Make sense? So how then do we try to rationalize knowing my wife's thoughts? She's the only one knows what she's thinking, well, outside of God, right? What she's thinking and why she's thinking that. And I'm sorry, you want to go on, babe? So you remember your husband's and wife's thoughts are their reality. You have to respect this, even if you might not disagree. How I'm feeling is real to me. So don't poo-poo my feeling, going back to the, the dinner thing. That, those words hurt me. And as silly as he might feel it is, it still hurt me. So we have to remember that our perception is our reality. Mm -hmm. And I know there was a time, I, not me not knowing Cedric's intentions, I just get out the car and start walking. But in Cedric's mind, because he's, he's seeing ahead and he's mapping out the safest route, I'm just do, 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 walking. And I didn't know I was offending him when I didn't follow with him. And then I actually thought, why are he being so sensitive? Are we all getting to the door? <laughs> but we had to talk about it, and he yeah. said, he, you know, he, he called me out. He said, he said, why don't you follow, follow me when I'm, he said, I'm trying to lead you to the path. I think the, the parking lot that time, it was rocky and muddy. It was a golf, she was, I was taking you golfing for the first time, drive to the driving range, and she just knew where she was going. I mean, I'm just walking. We all see the door. I'm just trying to get to the door. It's like, you haven't even been here. Matter of fact, I just bought you clubs, and you don't know where you're going. Follow me. But then the thing is, it was muddy and rocky in the parking lot. Yeah. And he said he was mapping out, so I didn't, you know, I missed the puddles and whatever. But I'm not thinking, I'm yeah. just walking, and I didn't mean mm -hmm. to hurt his feelings. Yeah. So now I'm more cognizant yeah. of yeah. that, you know, of what he's doing. Yeah, because I get out of the car, I look, I, I, I survey. I mean, if there's water puddles, it's like, I ain't going that way. I'm going this way. If there's a safest route. So I'm processing that, and she'd just be like, pew, I'm like, where are you going? <laughs> And, and <laughs> appreciate, I couldn't understand it. I, at a restaurant, he doesn't sit with his back to the door. Why? What's the, like, you, you in the mob? I, 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 didn't, I, didn't under, I didn't understand, but now I get it that he's protecting me. Yeah. He, he's, he's seeing ahead. Like, I, I'm the one with, I'm not going to lie, I'm the one with the deer, eyes, deer in the headlight. Yeah, yeah. Like, if we go somewhere, I'm the sightseer. And I'm, ooh, ooh, ooh. Instead of like, Lisa, keep your head on the sw swivel. And I'm like, ooh, ooh, ooh. I'm missing. I'm the one to get mugged. <laughs> I'm like, baby, you but can't be acting looking. like a tourist and you're like, they're going to rob you. You know, it's like, <laughs> so, and think about this dynamic. I grew up in Compton and you, you woke up, you're dreaming about keeping your head on the swivel, you know? Everywhere you go, you have to think and process where you go, what you do, what you say, what you wear, everything. You have to process all of that. She grew up in Georgia in the South, you know, in the woods, running barefoot in creeks and stuff like that. I'm like, you do what? You did what? You know, you walk barefooted? Nobody walks barefooted, you know? <laughs> so you had that clash, right? That, that here she is just... Like early in our marriage, you know, because Lisa was saying hi to everybody. I'm like, do you know them? <laughs> like, you, you don't just say hi to everybody. And she was, what's wrong with you? What's you don't say hello. You? Why are you so rude? You know, I'm like, but no, you don't just say hi to everybody. <laughs> and that was just that, that clash of, of differences that, but, but, it, but I, she didn't know why I was doing and thinking that way. I don't know why she was doing and thinking that way. So there's that respect of, okay, I see it from your perspective now, rather than, well, no, 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 you just changed because I don't like, I assume what you're thinking, which is totally inappropriate. Only, listen, only God through the power of the Holy Spirit can manage your husband's or your wife's thoughts. Stay out of their head. Because it's going to get into your head and confuse you big time. You know, and here's the deep thing. No matter if your spouse is having good thoughts or bad thoughts, God will deal with them. Good thoughts or bad thoughts, right? Because they could be thinking bad thoughts and you're like, okay, believe it. You know, I want to, well, why are you thinking that way? Well, why are you? And you'll be digging and digging and digging and then you get your feelings hurt. 
first thing someone can do is like, so do you ever, you ever think about your old girlfriend? girlfriend? What? <laughs> that is the stupidest thing you can ever do or the most creative thing you can do to get your feelings hurt. <laughs> it's like, oh, do you ever think about your, come on now, you, you're just setting yourself up for like a tragic hurt in your heart. Now, at the end of the day, if your spouse is having bad or negative thoughts, leave it up to God, because only God knows the thoughts of man, right? Only God knows the thoughts of man, and he manages it very well, and he will bring out conviction when conviction is needed, and he will, matter of fact, um, if you look at the word no in this verse in Psalm 139, it means to be skillful in. In other words, God he says, search me, O God, and know my heart. It says, put me to the test and know my anxious thought. So God knows skillfully your thoughts. He, know, he says to know a person carnally, so he also knows your simple thoughts. And he will make them know. So you can hide thoughts all you want. At the end of the day, what's in your Whatever is a man uh, think of in his heart, so is he. It eventually oozes out, and God has a unique way of dealing with it. He and let him be God. The next thing is to trust God with that, because you yes. can't you can't change a, a man or a woman with your words. You can't nag. You will nag them to death, but you're not going to bring change. It's only God can change the heart of a man mm -hmm. or a woman. What you want to do is hit your knees and, and tell tell on them. Tell mm -hmm. on him. Tell God on him and watch God move. Amen. And God will change his heart or her heart for the good. Amen. Exactly right. Um, and again, stop assuming your thoughts. Um, your thoughts and feelings are known by him or her. And then um, what he and she needs is a good listener. James 1, 19 to 20 says this. You know this, my beloved brothers and sisters. Now everyone must be quick to hear, slow to speak, slow to anger. For a man's anger does not bring about the righteousness of God. The word slow uh, means to be not hasty. Now, the synonym for the word hasty, listen to what it says. Not rushed, not hurried, and not injudicious. In other words, you got to be judicial in your thoughts. You can't just be this one way of adjudicating things. And also being thoughtless. Chances are if you're speaking too quickly... What you said was very thoughtless. Listen to hear. And not to respond. You want to elaborate on that? I struggled with that big time. I'm, 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 I don't even think I'm hearing what you're saying, but I'm, I got the comeback <laughs> ready for when you stop. Yeah. And, I, and I really wasn't listening mm -hmm. to his yep. heart, so I was missing. Yep. Yep. The, import, the importance of what he was saying because I was so, so busy trying to get my point across, so busy trying to win, you know, instead of really listening to his heart. Yeah. So what I had to learn on the other side, guys, because my nature in early on was I just clam out, check out. But I would have to literally say, you listen to me? Did you hear what I just said? <laughs> Are you listening to me? Did you hear what I just said to you? And there's times that, listen, if you want me to communicate what's in my heart, I will suggest you probably lower your tone, so, slow your pace, and listen to what I have to say. If not, I'm just going to check out. Now, again, those are thoughts that I wouldn't verbalize initially, but I had to learn that I needed to verbalize them so she could understand this is how I'm thinking, and if you don't want me to disconnect from you, which no woman on this planet wants her husband to disconnect, I have to say, baby, the way you're talking right now to me is making me want to shut down. So please, and there was even time, I mean, she's, she doesn't do this very often now, but, but I mean, there was times, right, that I would have to say, you need to probably reconsider how you just approached me. I'll just say that. I said, please reconsider how you just approach me if you want me to listen to me. And I wouldn't yell. I would just like, I'm sorry. Because I learned with it within myself because 
I wasn't raised with a father. Yeah. I didn't have any big brothers. I had to protect myself. The mm -hmm. only way I protect myself, my mouth. Mm -hmm. I could wound you with words and leave you cut up and bleeding, but I, that's not gonna work in, in a marriage. And I exactly. also had to you know, revisit that painful part and ask God to heal that mm -hmm. part so I don't come yeah. off yeah. so much. Absolutely. So, so harsh. Yeah. And again, this is both ways. Both ways. Again, if you're not, don't feel like you're being heard, you got to communicate it. Mm -hmm. And again, if they, after communicating it, you still don't feel like you're being heard, get on your knees. And the one who can help people listen can help people listen. You know, and, and he's really good at that. You know, so don't try to manipulate your words, manipulate the environment, be all creative to make them listen to you, it will never work. You just get your feelings hurt over and over again. And it will, I believe what you find in relational context is that that healing and that thing that troubles you would just be prolonged because it's almost like God is just waiting for you to step away and deal with that. Let him deal with it because he's better at it. And lastly, I, did, I, I had to learn because I, I come off so hard. And I used to hit the door, Cedric would be in his office, hit the door, well, you need to look, 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 look. And I could see the wall come up. Mm -hmm. I could see the wall come up. Mm -hmm. And I had to step away and I asked God to deal with me. And they, sometimes we had to have hard conversations, but I had to preface it in prayer first and ask mm -hmm. God to give me the words mm -hmm. that would reach him and not in the manner and how to, mm -hmm. uh, to reach them. Tone means a whole lot. Yep, for Tone sure. means a whole lot. Yep. And now I'm better yeah. at, okay, God, I might be hot, but I'll take yeah. that time yeah. to, to pray and, and well, think about yeah. what I'm saying, where I don't come in yeah. so hard. Yeah, tone and pitch, right? A, a woman's pitch. Woo. It's like, baby, why are you yelling at me? I, I ain't yelling. I ain't yelling. It's like you, 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 you are raising your voice at me. Oh, no, 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 no. You are raising your voice. You know, and, and guys, we have to be careful, especially guys with very strong voices. Man, you, you scare your kids because of the, the bass in your voice. And, and it's like, you know, so you have, to, you have to know that, okay, maybe I need to speak a little softer and speak in a better context and things like that. So you have to be self-aware versus just randomly like, I'm just going to say whatever I want to say, however I want to say it, because I'm going to tell them how I feel. Well, you're going to always get your feelings hurt. You're going to always get your feelings hurt, and you're going to close your spouse's heart towards you. It, 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 just, it just happens. And not to mention, just that then reverberates into your children. Your children see how, okay, this is how you communicate or don't communicate. And, and, and even it normally happens that, okay, if that woman, a wife is speaking to her husband that way, chances are speaking to her son that way. You know, if that guy is speaking to his wife that way, he's modeling how his daughter is seeing it. And typically he'll, he'll do the same thing with his daughter. So it's, it, you got to get it right. You got to get it right and be self-aware to know that. Like I used to have an employee, he's one of my regional managers, and he had just a strong God-given voice. And I would visit customers with him, and I saw how his customers reacted to his voice. And I said, and I took him to the side afterwards. I said, man, you know, God has blessed you with a very strong baritone voice. I said, bro, but you scare your customers. <laughs> he said, no, 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 no. I said, I said, next time you go back in there, just observe how they, how they shift in the chair and be like, because it's almost like you're yelling at them, but you're not yelling at them. But you have to know that, okay, this is what God gave me, and I can't, you know... Um, scare people with it. <laughs> so lastly with this is that it's important. I mean, communication has to happen. You got to be able to listen, but sometimes you have to map out, schedule, and even be strategic with your listening times. You know, right? Right. That's, this is part of my argument last night, our, our discussion last well, night. I didn't discuss it. I didn't discuss it at all. Of how go to ahead. word this next thing. But you don't want to ask your spouse for their undivided attention in the midst of the, the busyness of life. Or the like, football game. I didn't, like the, I didn't like that it started off with the football game. I was like, can we make this word, can we word this a little better? I started off with the football game. But now I can Our say baseball game, I basketball eat, game. Or maybe if he's watching the game, or if she's in the kitchen cooking.
cooking and trying to get the kids together, and you want to come in and lay no. something heavy on them. Well, well God, the so the time. problem, here's the challenge with guys. We, we can multitask, but we can't multitask. Yeah. Yeah. We can't we can multi-think, you know, and talk <laughs> and be all emotional and all. It's like, huh, what you say? You know, it's like, <laughs> are you listening to me? Yeah, 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 I'm listening. I mean, it's like, so don't think that you're going to have this heavy, deep, conversation that you've been thinking about for the last week or so, you, you go get your fill dessert. It's just, <laughs> it's going to be like, well, why are you not paying attention to me? Well, because you just walk right in front of me and I'm watching this program, you know. <laughs> but on the flip side, you know, you can't be trying to have conversations with your wife in, in times that it's important to her. Like, let's say she's in the midst of getting the kids ready. At come, she's at work. She's at work, and you texting her. Yeah. It's like how you 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 can't be having deep conversations. First of all, via text, you shouldn't be doing that. You know, and and are saying things that are like you should wait until you get home are an appropriate time to talk, not like sending a text or something and saying something that then now you don't ruin your spouse's whole day because you just sent that text versus being disciplined and wait till they come home and, and be able to have the conversation. Even, bombarding them as soon as they hit the yeah, door. yeah. And even have, so you really many times have to have an agreeable time mm-hmm. that you agree that, Hey, we're not going to talk to each other about deep things when we both walking in the door. We're not going to talk about deep things in front of the kids. You know, we're going to, okay, and you come up with an agreeable time that you go deep versus one's trying to go deep, the other one's trying to go deep. And especially if you don't know how to go deep conversationally, you, you got to be able to say, and truth be told, there's times you need to bring uh, safe couples in if you are trying to learn how to have deep conversations is to bring couples in that you can trust or a couple that you can trust, that you know your business is not going to travel anywhere else, but you're able to say, hey, we're trying to navigate this. Can you, can you mediate this? Can you be here while we're talking through this to make sure I'm not offending her, she's not offending me? And then eventually you can peel away and then handle it on your own. You know, but there are certain things that you need to bring mediation in um, that is healthy. And I think a healthy mediation is you can get a healthy couple, not just a healthy husband, not just a healthy wife, but a healthy couple who can hear simultaneously what's going on and be able to extrapolate what really is happening in the heart. Make sense? Mm-hmm. And, and did, did you touch on that discussion when tired? Because that, that's, you really don't want to discuss heavy matters when you're tired. Mm-hmm. People are tired, they're, they lash out. Yeah. I know I'm not the best, yeah. friendliest person when I'm tired. Yeah, yeah. Nor am I. No, so, no. <laughs> Captain Grouchy Pants. <laughs> you grouchy. You need to go to sleep. Yep. <laughs> she said, "You need to go. You need, you need to take a nap." <laughs> I'm like, "Oh, what you saying?" <laughs> <It's> like, yeah. <laughs> All right, so again, our three ways to encourage him. Hopefully, these were encouraging. Stop being his, uh, his mom, her dad. Stop being so critical of him or her. Uh, stop assuming your thoughts or feelings are known by him. Thank you for joining us here at Commitment Online, a place for all nations. If you're ever in the Philadelphia, Delaware, or South Jersey region, we hope to see you in person. But for now, please tune in next week here at Commitment Online.